At the Sickle Cell Foundation in Nigeria, patients are being treated for a disease that affects millions of Africans on the continent and in the diaspora. This life-threatening condition is sickle cell anemia. Rebecca was diagnosed age seven. Her mother is taking her for a checkup. I will be very happy if they can produce the drugs that can cure it, so I will have rest of mind. When she's in pain, I will not happy. Sickle cell anemia disproportionately affects people of African origin. There is no cure, and treatment can be hard to access and expensive. One Nigerian company working to find a solution to this disease and others is 54 Gene. It's building Africa's first commercial DNA biobank. The health tech company is working with international organizations as well as local African institutions to improve the study of genetics research. 54 Gene gathers and stores samples from local hospitals, which researchers can now use to discover new drugs which can be used to treat people of African origin. So over here right now, she's extracting um, on the Maxwell 16, so she's extracting human DNA from saliva samples, um, which we will be using um, biobanking. These tests that we're doing, are they, they're bespoke to Nigerians because we're doing things like sickle cell. Um, sickle cell is known to be more common in West Africa. And if we provide that data that can help with discovery of drugs for sickle cell, now it's known that previously, if a drug is approved by the FDA in the United States, for instance, it takes like 20 years before it gets here um, because it's done in the United States. So if we can be in charge of that data, we send the data, we get drugs discovered, then it gets to us faster. The African genome is the most genetically diverse in the world, but Africa's DNA currently makes up only 2% of the world's genetic database. This is the challenge which 54 Gene, which launched earlier this year, is seeking to address. Its founder, Dr. Abasi Eniabong, left his role as a management consultant in the pharmaceutical sector to move back to Nigeria. When you're looking at uh, discovering new drugs uh, or even understanding disease or new diagnostics, what is valuable is what you call genetic variation. Um, Africa has the most genetic variation on the planet Earth. Um, in fact, Africa might account for about 50% of the world's genetic variation. And then when you consider that a population of people or a region in the world has this much genetic richness and yet only 2% of the genetic studies has focused on this population, it means that there is a lot that we are missing um, globally in terms of genetics research. We are in an era where uh, genetics is actually what is being used to discover new drugs. Um, in fact, there are two drugs in the market now, um, in the UK, Japan, uh, US, that were discovered as a result of mutations found in African populations. Interestingly, those drugs have not yet come into Africa, um, but they're being used to treat people of all races. That's how studies or, or having data like what we had, were generated in, in, in Nigeria can actually uh, help the global research community because now it's possible to begin to ask the right questions for diseases like cancers, stroke, hypertension, diabetes, Alzheimer's. Their groundbreaking research has already raised $4.5 million of investment, which marks the biggest seed round for a health tech startup in Nigerian history. We've been growing pretty fast, um, but we are building um, what I want to become one of the biggest biotech companies in the world. Um, that's a huge ambition to put on television. I want to see empowerment, uh, to see that Africans are contributing uh, to treatments that treat them and people of all races. The market potential for African genomic data is truly global, and research including people of African descent could help health practitioners to dispense revolutionary new medicines here in Nigeria and across the world.